Hey guys, this is Nick and today I'm going to talk about something that I've wanted to talk about for a while and this is Linux as a platform. We often hear people saying that why don't app developers develop their apps for Linux? Why don't they port for Linux? Why does Linux have no apps? And this is basically meaningless because you can't really develop a Linux app because Linux has no application development platform in and of itself. What we have though is multiple emerging platforms and as they grow and emerge, they cause problems and they disrupt habits. Now speaking of disrupting habits, maybe it's time for you to try and learn something new thanks to today's sponsor. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and you probably all know what Skillshare is. You've seen the ads, you know the drill. It's an online learning community where you can basically learn about any topic that you want, whether it's learning something completely new or reinforcing one of the skills that you already have, chances are you will find something that interests you in the platform. Now, personally, I've been using Skillshare for a while now to improve my video making skills. I learned about better editing, better dynamic editing, better lighting, better color correction in DaVinci Resolve, how to rhythm your videos better, how to organize your scripts better. And I can assure you that what you're watching right now, the level of quality that you have right now would be way lower if it wasn't for Skillshare. So of course you can give it a go for free, but if you want access to all courses, you will need a premium subscription. And fortunately for you, the first 1000 people who click on the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. So get over to the description, click that link and start disrupting your habits, start learning something new. Okay, and back to our Linux platform. And what is a platform? I'm, I'm talking about an application development platform. The best example that most people will be familiar with will be in the smartphone world, with the iOS platform and the Android platform. These basically give developers a controlled environment to create applications easily. They contain a set of libraries that you can use to avoid reinventing the wheel, a set of system services to work with the device you're running your application on, as well as various APIs and human interface guidelines so your apps look at home on the platform and the users are able to use them without being completely lost. You also generally have a packaging method and a distribution platform so you can ensure that your app is installable and discoverable by users, that is, unless you also run an ads program on your store and in that case, basically you have no chance of being discovered by users unless you pay. So when you develop an application, you target the Android platform or the iOS platform and you use that ensemble of building blocks to get started quickly and ensure that your application is up to the standards that have been set by the platform creators. Problem is, there is no Linux platform and there has never been one. But Nick, of course there is no Linux platform, Linux is a kernel. Okay, so Linux, if we use the term to describe Linux-based operating systems, not just the kernel, has never had a unified application development platform. But that's simply because there is no one Linux operating system. You have what we call Linux distributions, which can be very different from each other, not including the same systems, desktop environments, packages, or libraries. Some will use systemd, some won't. Some will use GNOME, some will use KDE, some will use newer versions of the kernel that have different APIs. You basically can't, as an application developer, you can't target that moving target because it's just way too different. You have no way of knowing what the user will have installed on their system. Now you also have other systems based on the Linux kernel like Android or Chrome OS. None of these would really be referred as parts of a Linux platform if it existed, as while they use a version of the Linux kernel, they don't ship the same elements that Linux distributions have. So Android apps don't work natively on Linux and Linux apps don't run natively on Android. And Chrome OS is even more confusing as it can run Android apps and Linux apps as well, but that's an entirely different story. So application developers can't really develop a Linux app. They can develop an application that runs on Linux based operating systems and that makes use of some of these libraries, but they don't have a unified platform and they have to make a ton of choices along the way. Now, do they want to have a dependency on system D and lock out users that have distros that don't ship that and incidentally occur the wrath of the anti system D crowd? Do they want to use GTK or Qt or something else as the toolkit? Do they want to follow human interface guidelines for a desktop that uses this library? For example, if they choose GTK, do they want to use the elementary OS guidelines or the GNOME guidelines? 
Or maybe make something that looks more at home on Cinnamon or XFC or Mate. And once the app is done, you have to decide on the packaging format. Do you want to try and get included in Debian's repos, Fedora's or Ubuntu's? Or do you want to ship an app image to make sure that everybody can use your app? Or do you want to go through the Flatpak route or the Snap route? Well, no, they probably wouldn't go the Snap route, honestly. All of these choices create an enormous combination of possible results. And as a developer, you tend to prefer a simple, easy path that application development platforms offer. That simple, easy path doesn't prevent you from making choices to step out of the path in most cases, but it provides you an easy way to get started and get started building your app now. Linux in itself doesn't have a single unified platform. What it has is multiple platforms, well, multiple emerging platforms multiple emerging incomplete platforms. What we have on Linux is parts of platforms that developers can and already do choose to use. And the best example, the best example for this is elementary OS. Oh, he's going to talk about elementary OS again. Yes, because these guys already have the full, the most complete platform, application development platform on Linux. They have an operating system. They have a language, Vala. They have a graphical library, GTK. They've got a human interface guidelines and the library that allows developers to implement it, which is called Granite. They have a packaging format, Flatpak, and they have an application distribution method, which is the App Center. Now, a lot of parts of this application platform are made by other people. The kernel they use, the base distribution they use, GTK, Vala, Flatpak, but what they also made is integrating all of these tools into a simple, easy to look at, easy to get started with package. They've got one package for developers, which allows them to get started easily. And that's basically the platform. But we also have other platforms in the making and the main one is GNOME. And this is also why there is a lot of discussion currently about GNOME, theming, Libadvita and all of that other stuff because these are decisions and developments made to create a GNOME platform. Now, if you want to learn more about this GNOME platform, I made a very cool video that you can take a look at in the card up top. Check it out, it's really nice. So GNOME doesn't want to be a simple desktop environment that distributions can pick, tweak, arrange as they like, and ship to users. They want to be a platform that developers can target. And to ensure that GNOME can be a platform, they need to lock a few things down. But why do we need platforms? Why can't we just keep desktop environments the way we were? Why do desktop environments feel the need to become platforms? And why does everything have to change? Well, think about the most common complaints people have about Linux. It's too fragmented. No one develops for Linux. Linux has no third-party developer support. Linux isn't stable. These are all the problems that desktops try to solve by becoming platforms. With well-defined platforms, developers can create applications that work well and look and feel the same in the hands of users. They can ensure they're stable because they have a stable target to aim for, and they don't have to make assumptions about what the user's distribution has or doesn't have. They have an enticing system and an easier, predefined path to start developing their application, and so they are more likely to develop an application, period. Now, some people, and that includes past Nick, Yes, these people will think that with the rise of these platforms, with more well-defined platforms, fragmentation will be worse. Applications will look more different. They won't interact as well with each other. Basically, everything will just get siloed and locked out. For example, an elementary app and a GNOME app wouldn't really feel coherent with each other, like a KDE app and a GNOME app. But the truth is that even without a GNOME platform or a KDE platform today, these applications already look incoherent with each other. Interoperability is also ensured because we have the free desktop standards and the portals interface, which allows applications and the system to communicate with each other. We have a perfect example of this with the respect dark style preference that is getting implemented in GNOME 42. It means that elementary iOS apps that are made for a different platform than GNOME apps will be able to respect the dark theme feature that GNOME users will have enabled and vice versa. And KDE can also implement this because it's a standard. It's 
It's a baseline that is defined so that every platform can implement it. So we have interoperability and communications, even with applications made for different platforms. And in terms of theming, sure, having a GNOME platform that enforces a specific theme, much like what Elementary OS is doing, will make GNOME apps stand out in a themed KDE desktop. But if we think about it for a bit longer, it's actually an advantage for users. How? Well, instead of having, for example, GNOME apps that kinda sorta look like your KDE apps thanks to the theme you applied on your GDK apps to look like your KDE apps, you will get a more defined and unified look for all your GNOME applications. There is no trying to hide the fact that the applications work and feel different. The header bars from GNOME will never look right inside of a KDE desktop which uses menu bars or hamburger menus. There is no hiding this fact. No theme can hide this fact. Basically, having that fake coherency, which is only surface-wide with the colors and the theme and the button shapes, is probably more detrimental to a regular user than just having clearly well-defined looks for each app from a specific platform, even if you mix and match applications. So to recap, as of today, developers already develop an application for GNOME, for KDE, for Elementary OS. They already make that choice. What is changing is that the desktops themselves are solidifying their positions as being really available as platforms for developers, which means that developers get a way easier path to get started developing apps. They can make more usable apps, more stable apps, and generally have more consistency with other apps from the platform. And this is an approach that works, no questions. It works for developers. Just look at Elementary OS. It's, it's not a widely popular desktop because it's only on Elementary OS. The Pantheon desktop is basically only shipped on Elementary OS. And yet, this platform already has about 100 applications available to it. These are simple apps, sure, but they all opted to respect the design guidelines of Elementary OS and use their platform libraries, which work really well. All these apps are amazing and they're super simple, but they are really, really good. And for users, you basically lose nothing in that transition towards being a platform because you get better applications, more applications. They will look like each other and work like each other. They will be more coherent. They will probably get updated more quickly and they probably will have less bugs. What you might lose is access to theming applications if you mix and match them, which means that if you have a KDE desktop bringing GNOME applications inside of your KDE desktop, they probably won't respect the theme that you define there unless they hack around it. And in my opinion, now, I didn't used to think that, but now I do, I think it's a better solution for the end user. As long as the dark theme preference is respected so you don't get blinded by a fully white Advaita app in the middle of your dark KDE desktop, but that's being worked on. Now, in the end, we can't really have it both ways. Either we want to attract more developers and get more applications, but that means that we have to renounce a little bit of user choice and we have to renounce the actual layer cake model that we use for Linux distributions. Or we strive to keep things as they were and we don't want to change a thing and we want to keep that model and all that user choice. But in that case, we are way less likely to have the application developers developing for Linux because there is no platform and no clear path to do so. So this video was made possible by Slimbook and you probably know about them by now, but if you don't, they are based in Valencia, Spain and they make Linux laptops and desktops at all price points for basically all use cases, all budgets, all keyboard layouts and they ship worldwide. So if you need a new Linux device, check them out through the link in the description below. They're really cool. I only use their stuff nowadays and I'm super satisfied. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications and whatever else YouTube wants you to do to get videos in your subscription feed. And if you didn't like the video, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. It works just as well. If you don't like YouTube, you can watch all my stuff on Odyssey. And if you want to help support what I do and keep me making videos because that's my full-time gig now, you can join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. You'll get access to a bunch of perks which are listed in the Patreon page. So thank you guys for watching and I guess you will see me in the next one. Bye!